gonna be a t-shirt. Uh, a regular t-shirt that you're very like comfort, um, comfortable and wearing, not that it's gonna like kind of uh, hug you real tight or anything. Maybe it fits a little bit loose. And so go ahead and grab your t-shirt. I'm gonna use a little Stanford Powell one that I have here. And uh, we're gonna need fabric. Um, when I make uh, these types of dresses, uh, depending if it's gonna be like for powwow, like with one of my outfits, or if I'm gonna use it for <clears throat> um, something else, it, the length matters. Um, you definitely don't want it to make a mini skirt tea dress. <laughs> so don't make it short, you're gonna long is better. Um, and you can always like, if you end up doing it too long, you can fix that with the hem. We could trim it up. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and grab your material, grab your t-shirt. Um, you'll also need a yardstick and I like to use chalk to make my markings and a good pair of fabric scissors. So let's go over to this sewing table. Let me flip my camera around. I just wanted to say very quickly to everyone a few things. Um, first things first, please, whenever you have a question, go ahead and unmute yourself if you feel comfortable asking the question out loud, or if you'd like to, you can go ahead and put it on the chat and I will facilitate the questions and ask them directly. So whatever you feel comfortable with. And um, secondly, this is again recorded. So if you wanna keep your cameras off or on, that's fully based on your comfort level. And yes, just a quick reminder. And for those who joined us a little later, um, these videos will be posted on the AICC Facebook page and the AICC website. Thank you. All right, so I'm so excited to use this material. I've been wanting to use it for a long time. And today we're gonna work with uh, cotton. So this is just um, plain cotton and it's already, kind of, it's already folded in half this way, like when you buy it from the store off the bolt. Um, so after you find your desired length, and mine is gonna be about, about 49 inches long. I'm not that tall. Um, I'm barely 5'3", so this is going to be long enough for me um, to go all the way past my knees and uh, around my ankles. Um, <clears throat> what you, I want you all to do is to open it up and fold it in half. This way, okay. And then what you're gonna do is then fold it in half again this way, okay? So <clears throat> um, when we have it laid out like this, after we're done cutting it, it's gonna be like your T is gonna go this way. But what we're going to do is we're going to fold it in half and we're going to make our pattern, okay? And so the salvage is going to be at this end over here. So you can go ahead and just do that and line it up on your cutting board. <clears throat> And even when I'm choosing my length, I'm still gonna leave a little bit long uh, or a little bit more than my actual size because um, you wanna account for the hem at the bottom. If you end up or like, oh man, I cut it to right up the precise uh, length that you wanted, 
that's okay too because you can finish it off with like some bias tape at the end. Um, so once you go ahead, once you do that, you're gonna grab your t-shirt. And you're gonna place it on your fabric. Okay, just like that. And I'm not gonna put mine all the way at the fold over here. And I'm also just gonna add extra to on the sides because typically you don't want these to be form fitting. Um, and if maybe you have a small waist, but you have big hips, you really wanna make sure that you account for your hips too. Um, or else it won't fit through. Okay, so I'm just gonna really overestimate, like, and so I'm gonna place, my shirt is here as a guide, and the ruler is where I'm gonna make my markings of how wide I want my tea dress to be, okay? And again, I like, mine to be really loose so it's not and once you do that and you have that part done you're going to go over here and use this part to make your wings or your sleeves okay so once you have that you're gonna go ahead and cut so grab your fabric scissors and then just go ahead and cut all along your markings Okay, you can use this later if you wanna make a mask or something. Cotton is always good for different things like that. And the next part that we're gonna do is just kind of mark up here. Uh, and again, you can use your t-shirt as your guide. Um, I'm just gonna make some markings for the neck. For the um, part where you did the sleeve, did you do it straight across or did you do a diagonal? Uh, so you can, I, I did it almost straight across. It, it kind of went down just a little bit. Um, but yeah, you could do it straight across. I just slightly go out very, very little, almost like so you can't tell. But you see how it's just like a T, like once you open Okay. Do the neck. Anisita, your mic is muted, just so you know. I don't know what happened there. Uh oh. Is it good now? It's good now. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm not sure if we, you, you all heard me. So I, you can go straight across. I just went very slightly over so it's not straight. Um, again, that's, that's all up to you. And then lastly, I made the marking on here for where I wanna cut out for my neck. So once you have, once you have this, then um, you're gonna go ahead and let's see, let me turn my camera around. Just 
just go ahead and put it up to yourself and then you can see if if that is going to work for you because you're just you're really just making your own pattern i know it's a little bit hard to see let me lower this and then you could see see mine's um going to be wide enough and there's also going to be some seams on there so you want it really loose fitting you don't want it to be form fitting not these dresses so don't do that because grandma's going to get mad <laughs> all right uh and then next what we're going to do is we're going to um we're going to clean up this edge here So this is the bottom part. This is just our hem. So before you opened it up, you kind of draped it over yourself. Make sure you do your hem. So you can line up this fold right here. You can line it up on your cutting, cutting board. I really like, um, I really like this, what is it? Uh, cardboard, kind of cutting board to use because I I use my yardstick and my chalk to do a lot. But if you have a rotary cutter and uh, that type of board, that also works really well too. Okay, so go ahead and grab your ruler, straighten your edge here. With the this is going to be the bottom of your dress. And there you go. Sometimes I like to go and cut the neck out very last, but if you are one that wants to, you know, do all your cutting and finish that process, then you can go ahead and cut your neck. When you open it up, it's almost going to be like a little boat neck. Okay, and that's going to be your neck hole. All right, next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hem up these sleeves. Um, because this isn't, this fabric uh, cut isn't very wide, like my sleeves aren't even very long. Um, what I have done is like with some of the extra, the extra fabric that I cut off, um, if you're like, okay, these sleeves are way too short um, and you want your sleeves a little bit longer, what you can do is you can add, you can add to your sleeves here. If they're an okay length for you, then uh, you can go ahead and hem it. Um, what we've been doing in some of the other classes is doing like a rolled hem here which is really simple and easy and it doesn't, you know, cost a lot of extra. Other, um, other ways that I've done the hem is using a bias tape. So that's the ice cream man again. It's funny because the ice cream man always comes when I'm teaching this class. It's too much. Uh, see, uh, if you have bias tape, then you can use bias tape to kind of do your hem here. But we're, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a rolled hem. Just makes me want ice cream. All right. So we're done making our pattern. We're done cutting it out. Now let's go ahead and go over to our machine 
and we're gonna do the hem on the sleeves. So for your sleeves, <clears throat> go ahead and open it up and we're just going to hem all the way across. What we're going to do um, again, just like we did last week when we we're making shawls, we are going to fold it once over and then fold it again. And that is a rolled hem. Um, if you're, you know, you want to cut off this part. You don't want any of that showing. You could do that. Um, for me, um, I don't mind because this is going to be an inside anyway, and I don't want my sleeves to be sh too too short either. So I'm just going to go ahead and roll this, and you're going to pick a straight stitch. So on your machine, you just want like a regular regular stitch. All right. Um, again, when you are starting any project, it's always good to check in with your machine. Um, it likes to have some love and attention too. So before our class today, you know, I um, opened it up. I, you know, cleaned out the dust, gave it a little bit oil earlier this week. And um, it should be good to go. I also use uh, a test piece of fabric right here uh, while I was waiting for people to join in. So it's just a straight stitch. This is a rolled hem. And this is just um, some extra fabric that I had uh, from one of our other projects. So. If you can, go ahead and test your stitch out on something other than your actual piece, just to make sure your machine is okay. Because if it's not, and you start stitching away, you might have to take out more than you'd like, and you could have just avoided it by using a test piece. So I recommend doing this all the time before you start stitching away. All right, so that's our rolled hem. We have a straight stitch. It's looking okay. So we're gonna go ahead and go for it. So go ahead and grab your, the sleeve of your dress and Roll the hem and you place your needle down. Again, um, there's these guides on the machine that are really, really helpful for sewing. You see like this, I taped over here when I had a big piece that I was working on. Um, but right here, these guides really, really help make sure that your lines stay straight and clean. Um, if you try to like just really focus in on the needle on this part, you might go a little bit cross-eyed or it just won't feel right. But uh, the, the more you get used to it, I think the better you'll be able to just see how the fabric feeds uh, itself or the machine feeds the fabric itself. You don't have to push or pull or anything. Your hand is only here like to guide your fabric. Okay, so if you're doing just the straight stitch, I'm lining up mine right here. And you're just going to go forward. Okay. I'm not pushing the fabric or anything. My hands just here to guide it and make sure that it's staying right along this all right, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay. 
Whenever I stop, I always want to make sure I put my needle back in so that if there is any pulling or tugging of the fabric, um, it won't get manipulated too far off because the needle is holding it in place. Okay, so yeah, go ahead and continue to roll your fabric. Let's see if this is good. Right, and when she gets to your end, lift your needle, lift your foot. And I like to pinch right here where my thread uh, ends on the fabric and then pull it out because if you're just gonna kind of like pull it by the fabric here, you might pull your thread um, and then your tension will be a little bit funny. So yeah, just go ahead and pull your thread and then cut that off. And we have a rolled hem here. Looks good. So go ahead and do your other side, your other sleeve. Same thing. We're just gonna roll once, roll twice, and do a straight stitch. If you see like right now, my, my thread is kind of like doing this funny thing. Um, it's always good to just go ahead and re-thread it um, because it really, it might really mess with your tension. So I'm gonna go ahead and just re-thread that. Not all my machines have an automatic threader, but this one does. So you guys won't be sitting and watching me try to thread for like 30 minutes because my eyes aren't good anymore. That didn't go through. Right. Once that's threaded, then go ahead and roll and stitch this other side, your other sleeve. And again, we used this this as a guide over here, so we're going to continue to do that for this. And I'm just going a little bit slower on my on my stitching because it's bouncing the table all around. So when it bounces the table, it bounces your little video too. <clears throat> Oh, it's so easy. The foot, the foot pedal that um, 
is kind of guiding the speed of the stitching. I think that the more that you work with your machine, the more that you'll get comfortable with the type, you know, the speed that you are comfortable with. Um, if you want to kind of stay at like a slow, steady pace, that's good. Others of you that are very skilled can power through very fast. All right, so there we have our rolled hem. And because we used our guide, you'll see that on this side, we can't see it very well, it should all be even, right? This line is just gonna be even from the edge because we used that guide. Whereas if we didn't, your stitch might like look like it's all over the place. But we did, so good for us. All right, so um, next, what I'm gonna have us do is this is this sleeve and because with this type of dress our sleeves are going to be open and so they're going to like have flaps um so then what i like to do is i like to take the sleeves going this way and do a hem all the way to like the armpit area okay so you can go ahead and with your edge, go ahead and roll it again. Roll it once, roll it twice, and we're gonna add a stitch there. Oh, my guy got unthreaded. Usually I use a contrast, like contrasting thread for these classes and I didn't do that, which I should have because this gray is just really messing up my eyes. And I hope you guys can see the stitches as we're going. This gray one is acting up on us. You're rethreaded. For those of you that joined in on our applique class on um, was that last week, um, also, you know, after you do a class like that or you do a project like that, you always want to make sure, you know, these things are tight because with a lot of sewing and there's like a lot of, you know, jiggling that ha might happen. So make sure your needle's tight. Make sure this guy is tight. And that's gonna make a big difference if you see like your stitches and your tension acting up. So go ahead and do your hem on the sleeves and for this one because this is going to actually be the edge when i start my stitch i'm going to press um press on this one there's a button here to go back and uh, for others it might be another like lever over here or something so you want to press that to go backwards so i start i go forwards a little bit and then i'm going to press the button I'm gonna press the button and go backwards and then go forward again. And that kind of seals the deal so that your stitch stays in. Okay. 
right when I get to the armpit area, I'm gonna go ahead and backstitch again. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and do our other side. So you're gonna do this, um, cause there's gonna be like four areas on your dress that you're gonna need to do this with. So those of you that are going at a faster pace, you can go ahead and do this all on all of your sleeves. Because these, these ones we're gonna leave like exposed, like these, these are gonna have, um, like, the, your, like the flaps are gonna be open. So forward, backwards, forward again. And then when you have um, like your corners done and stuff, um, go ahead and you know trim these threads off. And when you trim them, because you did a forward and backward stitch here, you shouldn't have anything coming apart. So I would recommend doing it like after you get it done or else you kind of have an accumulation of all these threads hanging everywhere. One time I was sewing with my mom and she saw me that I was leaving them until like I was done stitching. And she was like, that's the lazy way. I was like, ah, okay, mom. All right, so where's our other sleeve? Got one sleeve done. Let's find our other one. And we're gonna do the same to this side. I know on Thursday we're going to be um, working with some, you know, making some ribbon skirts. And so that part, like say you're not working on your project right now, you're just working, you're just viewing the video and you're getting ready, getting your mind prepared. Um, that that uh, class will show you how to put ribbons on these tea dresses if you want it. So you can kind of decorate and embellish if you want. This one, I think I'm gonna just leave plain. when you do like some nice, you know, hems like this, then um, you will be okay like throwing these in the wash. Um, especially my cotton dresses, I like to be able to wash them uh, in the wash machine. With some of our other regalia pieces, you know, it's like gotta be real careful and hand wash it. But these ones, Especially if you're gonna do some of activities in them, you don't want them to smell. You wanna make sure that everything stays clean. Take care of your stuff. So, yeah, this the, this type of ham, you know, you you'll be safe to put it in the wash. Uh, if you're doing this with bias tape, sometimes. If uh, your stitch is a little bit towards the edge, it will, your bias tape will start to come off. And I've seen that happen. And it's also happened to me before when I was like working, I was making a tea dress and it was um, not with cotton, but with satin. And I edged it with bias tape 
uh, not because I wanted to be lazy, but I wanted to kind of have some contrast. Uh, so it was more for fashion. <laughs> and um, yeah, because of the fabric, it, it was, it would just eventually started to slip off. But later I learned, okay, let's do a different stitch. You know, when you're putting bias tape on, if you're working with fine fabrics. Yeah, so there's things like, even if you wanted to use bias tape, there's things that you can do to help me enforce your stitching. All right, so let's see, did I just talk our way all the way through these sleeves? I think so. I think we're done with all four sides. We got these sleeves done and now um, I want to open it up and show you guys. So here we have our neck hole right there. You see, as I put it up, it's like a T. And our sleeves, I, I, I want this one to like stay open. So that's why we have the hem here on the inside. And once you're done with that, what we're gonna do is turn it completely inside out. Okay, so it's like this and line it up. Line it all the way up. Um, you can pin it if you have pins and you want to pin your edges, you can do that. Especially if you're working with something other than cotton, that's a real, you know, it would be really good to do that because cotton it's just really um sewing friendly if i line them line it up like that i can I, I just go ahead and put it into the machine and uh it works fine but let's go ahead for um some of our beginners that are joining us we'll go ahead and do a, we'll pin up the sides of this so you all can see that process too Okay, so go ahead and grab your pins and we're gonna pin all along here. I'm not gonna pin too heavily. Um, for those of you that feel secure in like you want your fabric to really stay in place and you like pinning it all the way and pinning it a lot, go ahead and do that. But I'm only gonna, I'm only gonna pin just enough to show you guys. Oh no, this is me trying to find my pins now. So just give me one second. But while, I'm, while I'm looking, um, does anybody have any questions? You can go ahead and put them in the chat and Jenny will um, you'll speak the questions out loud for everyone. Or if anyone would like to go ahead and ask a question, by unmuting themselves, they can totally do that. Whatever you guys feel comfortable with, of course. All right, I'm back with our pins. Any questions, Jenny, so far? We're good. As of right now, no questions have entered the chat. Okay, all right, so go ahead and put your fabric back on your board. 
Again, it's all lined up. And you can go ahead and place your pins. If you are gonna pin a lot of your dress, I would recommend um, first spacing out your pins, your pin, uh, pen placement, and then going in between. If you wanna increase the number of pins that you place on here. And once you have it all pinned up, then you go ahead and take it to the machine and we're gonna stitch up the sides. All right, so this is the armpit area and we stitched a little bit of a hem to that area. So I'm gonna start, um, like right here and then curve around and down. So also when you're like doing any curves and you're sewing, um, sometimes naturally it'll just be a tighter, tighter um, stitch, like as you're turning. But if you need to do it manually, like if you're really spacing these stitches out really uh, long, then at least when you get to this armpit curve, you wanna make sure it's tight. All right, so again, these are gonna be open. So I'm only gonna start right here. And I am gonna go and stitch forward and stitch backwards. Pen came out. For some of your machines, um, the pins will not go through them. Meaning, if uh, you get to the pin, you want to go ahead and take it out before you sew. Um, for other machines, like this machine, will just it'll jump over the pin. So I can actually leave my pins in place if I wanted to, and it will jump over them. Okay, right now, um, you're gonna use your guide here as well to make sure that you have an even, even hem, because whatever you do on this side, you're gonna wanna do to the other side as well. So go ahead and sew. Once you get to your pin, take it out. Continue your stitch. Again, my hand is only guiding. I'm not pushing or pulling. And once again, if you're if you have the machine that can't jump through or jump over your pins, make sure you're taking them out. Because if you um, if your needle doesn't jump over your pins, then um, what you can do is your needle will get bent. And it's going to be really difficult. You'll have to re replace your needle before you continue sewing. Once you get to the edge, go ahead and 
pinch your fabric here where the end of your stitches and pull and go ahead and cut. Now you can go ahead, if you did sew with the pins in place, go ahead and take all of those out. And we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. When I was um, talking to my honey about our project tonight, I was like, man, there's a lot of people that are interested and they might join in and stuff. And even a lot of experienced people, I was telling them how nervous I was. And um, I was like, no, just go ahead and do your thing. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna just tell them this is the, um, this is the, uh, all right, grand entry is in two hours and I need a purple dress. Let's go, you know. <laughs> uh, I love that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, go ahead and do the same thing to this side as we did to the other side. All right, so now we have both sides stitched up. Before I turn this inside out um, or right side out to uh, look at my work, what I'm gonna wanna do next, for those of you that have a serger, um, this uh, edge that we did, you, you know, could have just went all the way across on your serger. Um, for those of you that might have like, a very just simple machine um, and you, you may have like some different stitches that are available to you like on this one there there is an overlock stitch that you know like you would use for a serger uh, there's an overlock however um, this may not be on a lot of folks machines and it also be might be uh, difficult if you're just learning how to use your machine or just starting out and sewing might get a little bit frustrated. So what we're going to do to help our edge is we're going to use this multiple zigzag stitch to um, and the multiple zigzag stitch you'll see right here. It's like little stitches in between the zigzags. So like a regular zigzag stitch is just like that. So you know the sewing will be at the points here but this multiple zigzag stitch is going to have little stitches in between so we're going to pick that setting and we're going to go ahead and reinforce um, this edge here because you'll see even just with this time of cutting and sewing you like see all those little frays and stuff so once you wash and wash and wash it may continue to fray. So what this stitch is gonna do is, it's just gonna help us um, keep our garment a little bit longer to stop all that fraying. All right, so you could start right here at the top of the armpit and just go ahead and go forward with your zigzag stitch.
Now I'm going to slow down a little bit so that you guys can see what I'm using as a guide now is in this foot that I have, there's like a little opening edge right here. And I'm using that as a guide um, because I don't want my zigzag stitch to go beyond this stitch right here. This is our stitch that's going to be um, kind of uh, when we fold it inside out, that this is the stitch that creates that line for us. Um, and so this, this zigzag stitch is only, again, to help reinforce and help to keep from fraying and help to, um, like, I guess, contribute to the longevity of your garment. So we're only going to be doing this zigzag stitch right here within this space. And it shouldn't be too difficult because you're using your guide. So this um, surface area right here is typically going to be the same. It's going to be consistent throughout your side stitches. So that's the guide that I'm going to be using so I don't go over this stitch. So you're going to do this all the way down your garment. And again, I love doing this stitch and like teaching this to the beginners. Because it's really simple and you're going to have a garment that's going to last you a while. So my mom and my aunties, they're like really skilled sewers and um, I think that we all do things differently in our sewing. And so like my style of sewing is really like um, powwow and like what, you know, cause even when I was making shirts for powwow and stuff, I made like a really polished shirt one time and they were like, no, you don't need to make it look like it's from Macy's. Just do something really simple that's not going to fall apart. <laughs> and so, like, the next shirts I did, you know, it was, um, like, really simplified like this. Because, like, when we're, um, like, dancing or doing other things, we don't, like, like really want it so bulky. Or even, like, if you're going to use this, um, yeah, for, like, say this is like some satin and you're going to use it. You want to do some like, um, for me, like some old style fancy. Uh, you're just going to, you're going to want something that is, yeah, well-made and it's going to last, but it's not going to be bulky or um, too complicated. when I made that shirt I had like cuffs on it and it had like a whole collar and like a nice um you know front like the buttoned up they're like no just something that slips over the head and something and I was like all right all right Okay, and then let's see. So this is what it's gonna look like. Okay, and so then I would also suggest once you have that done, 
And with a very, very, very careful eye, you would go ahead and trim, trim here, just as like a serger would do, to have like a nice clean edge. But you have to be careful because you don't want to cut your, your stitching or your thread. So you see how it's just gonna be like, like so. So you're just gonna go ahead and trim all the way up. And if you're making a dress like this for the first time, I would really uh, encourage you guys to use like a good cotton like this um, because it just feels so good when you're able to like, oh my goodness, I did it, you know. Uh, if you're gonna like really go into fine fabrics with your first dress like this, you you might like run into some trouble and then you, you know, may get discouraged and give up and light it on fire. No, I'm just kidding, you wouldn't do that, but um, it could get frustrating. It takes like a lot of patience when you're working with fine fabrics, but this cotton is really, um, really good to sew with for beginners. And then once you have it down and you're like, okay, I made, I made um, a dress or two, or I got, I, I got this, then you can go on to the fancy stuff. When I was learning also, I kind of started on small pieces. So just sewing for like youth or even toddlers, because then I knew that I wasn't wasting fabric if I messed up. So like this cotton, you know, like you get it on sale and stuff, but sometimes it's, it really costs a lot when you're going to the store and um, you find the one you want and it's like $10 a yard. And then you mess up and you're like, oh no. So um, if you want to start off with a small piece and, you know, give it away, make it for someone else. That's always a good idea. <clears throat> so there we have it. We have our edge all the way down. And you'll see up here, it's only sewn just a little bit and then it's gonna just be open. All right, so we're gonna take the other side and do the exact same thing. We're gonna <clears throat> multiple zigzag stitch it all the way down and then trim it. And again, I'm using my foot as a guide right here.
All right. So there we go. We'll go ahead and trim that up. I hope the table wasn't bouncing too much. I was trying to do a slower stitch so you guys weren't bouncing all over the place on the video. This is just such a fun and easy project too. Um, and you can do it in one night, you can do it in one morning, you know. Tea dresses for everyone. Just kidding. You get a tea dress, you get a tea dress. Oh my God, are we doing the <laughs> Oprah? <laughs> <laughs> That's just my inner Oprah coming out. Absolutely love that. I want one too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you'll see like um uh I I I like teaching these classes to folks too because um I think that a big part of like who we are and our culture and stuff is the generosity part where um if we're able to give back or if we're called upon and we need to give back to the community, then you're able to create some things and give those away. And then it just has all that love and warmth that you, you know, put into it. Because you know, we always start our project with all our good intentions and our good thoughts and stuff. So I really believe that it's felt by the receiver and that um, I know when I have received gifts that were made versus like gifts that were bought, it's just such a huge difference. Um, I mean, the things that are bought, they're also appreciated and really nice, but to receive something like this that's made by you, your family, it really is a blessing. So look how cool that looks now when we flip this inside out. So um, this is the part where I would encourage everybody to get out their irons and their ironing board and um, really just freshen up that, that seam right there and just do a nice press over it. <clears throat> and once you do that, <clears throat> then you can go ahead and do a top stitch. So uh, this is what your back, you know, the inside is gonna look like, not the back, the inside, okay? And when you press it, you could press it over onto one side. And I would encourage you to like, whichever way it goes, make sure that it's that way on the other side too. Um, you know, this side, if you're gonna do it this way, make sure you do it that way to the other side or this way. Uh, so go ahead and, you know, press your, press your seam. Um, make sure it's nice and even all the way up and down. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm just going to go ahead and do this side so that you guys can see. Um, <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is just do a straight stitch and stitch it all the way up. Okay, so we'll do a straight stitch. Let's see, I'm going to adjust it. And if, okay, so this is laying on this side. So that's where you're gonna do your straight stitch. If you can see well, um, let me pull it a little bit closer. 
this is the seam right here. And then this is where our, like our back is. So I'm going to stitch on this side of the hem to really just hold it down. And um, let's see, right now I have gray thread in there and you won't see it um, too much. If you want to choose a thread that matches your fabric on top, then you can go ahead and grab a thread to your liking. They'll look really good. Oh man, this thread is just having Let me cut this off. This thread has a mind of its own today. It's like it just wants to dance freely or something. All right, yes. So I would recommend, like I said, to go ahead and, and press your seam open before you do this stitch. I'm gonna go ahead and go for it for the sake of time. And because this pattern is so busy, you can't even really see where my seam is. What are you stitching? I'm stitching all the way up. So we uh, made the seam on the sides and we created our or we reinforced our back, you know, that seam. So now I've opened the seam up right here. Mm -hmm. This is where the seam is. And I am just doing one straight line all the way up. Small seam. Let's see if I can pull this back around. Is that just to reinforce it too, or is that to make it look straight? It's to reinforce it. So let's see if you can see well here but this is where the seam is and this is where my stitch is. Oh, and what it's doing is it's just holding this back and it's gonna stay that way. It's not gonna like fly around everywhere back and forth and like even, you know, continue to fray if it wants to fray. It's just gonna hold it down in place right there. So you're gonna do this all the way up. This is kind of like funny because what it's doing is it's opening up the dress and so we don't have like a really flat um, uh, piece anymore like we were stitching up the sides. So there's some dress on this side and some dress over here.
and you're going to do this all the way up to the armpit. Now we can go ahead and take this take this out. I'll try to show you guys. Hopefully the lighting is okay. It's great. This is our seam right here. See our seam right there? And this is our stitching. Okay, it's a little bit hard to see because it's gray. That's the stitching all the way up and down the dress. <clears throat> and then on the back side, what it did is it just went and stitched it all like onto the fabric here. So we can't we can't pull it over to this side anymore. It's just gonna stay in place. Okay. So that's what the right side looks like. And that's what the wrong side looks like. Not the wrong side, but the inside. All right, so go ahead and do the same thing to the other side. Press your seam. and go ahead and stitch. Now, because I want them to be facing the same way, the inside is now pointing that way. And I'm gonna be stitching on this side of the seam. Whereas on the other edge or the other um, side, I was stitching on this side, but, um, now we're gonna do the other side. And again, this is just a straight stitch all the way up to the armpit. And if you're, you're, this is a uh, cotton, so it's kind of grabbing onto each other. So that's why I keep on moving it to make sure, like this is flat right here, like our, our sewing line, because if this fabric kind of folds underneath, you might like stitch something you don't want to stitch. So we're almost to the armpit area. All right, and then we 
can go ahead and take out take your fabric out cut your threads and that side is stitched so you'll see here this is the uh, seam and then this is the stitch we just did right there and next we're gonna do the hem so uh, also if you have an iron for this this is really good time to get that out and um, if you look at the inside we already have some fraying going on or this might be some threads you can just kind of trim that off what you're going to want to do is with your iron you can get your iron and iron your hem all the way across your dress and then once you do this iron then you can fold in and do another iron okay just like that um the other thing if maybe you don't have an iron and um you're really comfortable with just doing a rolled hem you can also do that rolled hem like this around this is the bottom of our dress so <clears throat> The great thing about having an iron though and doing this with the iron is that if you made any mistakes with your cut on the bottom, uh, you'll be able to see that when you're ironing it and uh, correct it a little bit for this hem. Whereas if you're just gonna go for it and um, you know do your stitches here, you might have uh, not as clean of uh, hem as you want so yeah I would encourage you guys to iron and so this is what the bottom is going to look like the other option that um, I had given you all before is if you wanted to use bias tape to edge the bottom so sometimes it looks a little bit prettier, kind of adds a little, some contrast to it. Um, the other thing is that, like I said, if you choose to do a straight stitch with this bias, it might, like after wear and tear and washing and stuff, it might start to come apart. Naturally, it will do that because you'll see how the fraying of this fabric is just wants to do that. It's not woven very tightly um, so when you if when and if you do that like if you want to do this what I recommend is doing also like a multiple zigzag stitch or if you do a straight stitch on here I would go over it with another stitch on top so <clears throat> I think that since I showed you all how to do the rolled hem and we did that for a lot of this piece already. I am gonna go ahead and show you how I put this bias on. And again, um, there's different ways to put bias on and this isn't like, um, I guess you would say like the professional way. <clears throat> but we are going to do the bias on the neck which is going to be the, the way it's supposed to be so if uh you're really wanting a polished look you would open your bias tape up right and then you would line up the edges here and you can use this ironed um, line as a guide and that's where your stitch would be so when you um fold it over the inside would look like this and you would do another top stitch to hold this down okay um, so you can do it that way what you can also do and like I said with the zigzag and that that actually won't 
come out like I was telling you. But if you choose to do this, where you're just gonna grab the fabric with your bias, then I would do like a multiple zigzag stitch. So it's um, grabbing the fabric in different parts, not just doing a straight stitch and it's likely to pull apart. So again, this form of like putting the bias on and stitching it here and rolling it over and stitching again, you'll have a really nice polished look. Um, and you can do that. But um, I am gonna show you this style. That way you can see some of the bias, uh, the bias tape, and uh, it'll add a little bit of contrast. <clears throat> All right, so go ahead and grab, uh, if you choose to use your bias tape, you can, you know, go along with us. If you wanna do a rolled hem, on this, you don't have bias tape. You want to do a rolled hem, you can do that. If you're creating your own bias tape too, that's really cool. And uh, you can do that by cutting the fabric on the bias, which maybe hopefully if we do more classes, we can do some fun stuff like that of how to's. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys this version just so you can see different ways. So what I do is really easy. That's where uh, this, this bias tape is really nicely ironed and everything. And it, uh, what you're gonna do is just sandwich the fabric in between the tape, okay? Just make sure it's all the way. Go ahead and choose your multiple zigzag stitch. and place it there. I usually start at the edge. Uh, I'm not, um, well, we're at the edge, but at the, one of the uh, side seams, that way, like your start and finish of the bias is not like in the front or the back and like really visible. Okay, so go ahead and make sure that's lined up and then we're gonna go, just go for it. Oh, put your foot down. And I'll show you guys if you can see here, this is what it looks like. It's pretty nice. And if, when you feel it, you'll feel it's like reinforced. Whereas if you just did a straight stitch with this, it might feel like uh, it's gonna come apart and more than likely it will. Yeah, and what it does, I mean like, you know, it adds that contrast and it, it, it looks and feels nice for all of our professional sewers and be like, oh, that's a violation. But um, <laughs> I really like uh, the simplicity of like this, doing this this way. And it also like, if you really do cut your, um, so you cut your dress too short or you cut it just right. This helps with like not having to uh, take away maybe like another inch or so with the hem after you roll it. On, um, and like I said, when I've done some of the other tea dresses, I've, you know, chose to do this on the sleeves instead of the rolled hem, uh, just to add some style and contrast also.
We are almost done. The last part that we're gonna do for our dress is gonna be the neck. All right, we've almost completed our go around on this edge. And you guys will have a tea dress in two hours time before grand entry. Just kidding. Nobody does that. I don't do that. One time I was head woman and um, the guy that was introducing or, you know, speaking for me, he was talking about just telling everybody how I travel around with my sewing machine. <laughs> he was like, yeah, she just made that outfit right before Grand Entry. I was like, oh my gosh. Yes, you're right, but don't tell everybody. You said my secret's out, guys. <laughs> yes. It's like this, uh, this uh, series is um, just all my sewing secrets. Man. Door must be open somewhere. There's all these little flies coming in now. All right, and we've completed our hem. And this is what she looks like. It's not nice. Even if you mess up a little bit, it'll still come out really 
looking good. And you'll see on the inside how this is just all in place still. And it's under our hem that we did. All right. So <clears throat> the last part that we're going to do is our uh, neck. But before we do that, what um, I want to do with you all too to show you is around this part where we did the, this like the underarm, right? And you have this curve. When you fold it over, you might see it's like kind of not laying nicely and it's like bunching up right there. What you can do is, um, this is pay attention to your seam right here, right? The seam is the seam that matters. Um, but go ahead and clip open like a triangle right there, or you can even just cut that and cut our strings. So that opens up a little bit um, on the inside. So even just right here, I just made this one little clip. And when we fold it, we come back to this side. It's not bunched up as much. Okay, so you can do that um, as much as you need to on those curves in the armpit so that it at least, see how this one is really bunched up right here? So it just wants, it wants to be free. restriction here. So I'm just going to go ahead and clip that. And so now and it lays a lot better. Okay. And then you can go ahead and iron that and it'll be good. So, so far, let me see if I can show you all before we do our last part. Last part, we got 10 minutes till grind entry. Just kidding, guys. Don't know why I keep saying that. Okay. So, here's our dress. You can kind of see, some folks like to um, just make the neck hole as wide as it can be, but not too wide to where it's like you have off the shoulder tea dress. That's not cute. Um, but you can see we have it. This is our hand. Look how cool that looks. Looks real nice and clean. Our sleeves looking good, looking good. Now we just need our neck. So for those of people like say this is going to actually be for powwow and you don't want your neck uh, neck too wide open, <clears throat> you can cut like a slit in the back on that midline. So it has a little bit wider opening to get through um, your head. But if um, you're using this for something else, and you want to just be able to slip this on and off and not deal with like an opening on top, then you can go ahead and cut your neck hole a little bit wider or as wide as you need it to be. And by doing that, <clears throat> or in order to do that, you go ahead and fold it over like that again. And then um, just make it a little wider, slightly wider. Because remember, this is going to be on both sides. So if you cut this side here, it's not just going to be like a cut on one side. It's going to be a cut on both sides because it's folded in half. Okay. So I am just going to make this one 
slightly wider, not very, very much at all. And um, you can see it's going to be there. So it didn't do the streak here but that's okay all right so if you um, are skilled and you cut your bias and you have the same color material as your bias then it's time to get that out if not if you're gonna use bias that you just pre-bought we're gonna um, I'm gonna show you how to do that for the neck okay so just like we were talking about before, what you're going to do is you're going to open up, open up your bias tape so that you sew onto the edge here. You line it up with the edge and we're going to use this line guide. Okay. The iron line um, to stitch it all around okay and i'm going to go ahead and fold this edge because i know that that is going to be my edge of the bias um, or where they meet the two bias um, pieces meet so uh, a lot of times machines will have a part that disconnects so that you have space underneath um, this bar and that way you can put your fabric in between that way so if you have that option I would recommend doing that because then it might be really difficult and you're going to be messing with fabric everywhere trying to get it um, trying to get it uh, in the right right position okay so go ahead and line up your bias tape with your fabric make sure your needle is lined up with the line that you want to use um, you can also uh, not use that line and use your guide here um, but if you have like tape or something and you want to put some tape right here so you aren't going cross-eyed on trying to figure out which line you're following, then it's like uh, you don't have to guess around. So go ahead and, oops, and we are on the wrong stitch. We want to do just a straight stitch for this. I still had us on zigzag stitch. I'm going to start over. We're going to sew forward and sew backwards. And then attach this all the way around the neckline. And if I, uh, I didn't mention it, but if there was like a, a right side and a wrong side, um, you're going to put the right side to right side with this process. And then this is one of our corners, so it's going to be a little bit tricky. But don't worry, just keep your fabric straight.
All right, so we're getting close to our other edge. So I know I'm not gonna need all this bias tape. I'm gonna go ahead and cut right here. I'm probably just keep mentioning Grand Entry because I'm just wishing for powwows right now. I miss everybody. I miss all the singing and all the dancing and all the mutton sandwiches. So once we've completed that, I'm going to go ahead and look at it, look around, because if, um, see, look at here. See how that's a funny stitch on my part? I want to just go ahead and clean that up. So when I flip it back around, it's going to be fine. Um, so I just want to make sure that do that and and again like i've been sewing for a long time but sometimes i make mistakes too um especially when i'm on zoom but uh i'm just gonna go ahead and clean up that line and once you do that this is like how it looks when we, we open it up. And you're gonna get your iron and you're gonna push it. You're gonna iron this down this way. Look how cool that is, okay? And for this, what we're gonna do is you can go ahead and um, once you iron it down, we're gonna stitch this so this stays down and inside, okay? So I hope that makes sense. And even though we're not gonna see any of this, I wanted to fold this over so that this also had a nice look there, okay? So once it's all ironed, um, You'll just have like a nice clean neckline. And you can do, uh, if you wanted to do a top stitch here on this edge, you can do that. And then also one over here. Um, <clears throat> I like to do a top stitch at this um, neckline right here. And then on the inside, Right here, I actually, instead of a regular stitch with the machine, I like to just go ahead and, and do a whip stitch. And so what that means is not by machine, um, but just like with your needle and thread, and you go ahead and stitch it through this way. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm actually, let's see, I think we're getting we're one minute over our time, um, but that is the last part that we would do. And this is how it would look after we had it finished. So I could continue maybe just for like another couple minutes, Jenny, and start the whip stitch to show folks oh, or we can definitely. we can end is that okay I'm comfortable with yeah i'm super cool with that i actually really would want to see it so i would love to see it okay yeah um i know when we did like a little person dress we had plenty of time um and and so now doing a big person dress and i went the my stitching was a little bit slower because i, I didn't want to shake the table too much 
Yeah, go ahead and grab your, your needle and thread. Let's see. And again, you probably want to choose like a thread that um, you're not going to see very well through the fabric. I um, am going to choose this turquoise thread so that you all can see. Um, see all my mistakes i'm just kidding no you'll see what i'm doing with it so go ahead and grab your regular old needle some for some good old-fashioned hand stitching and thread your needle went through you can go ahead and just do um simple knot at the end or surgeon's knot if you know how to do that you guys can google that okay so i just knotted this and it's doubled okay so it looks like this the needle all right so then we go ahead <clears throat> and again like you all are great and you're gonna iron this down before you do this is you just go ahead and you can start here and you just do a whip stitch. All right, there's our tail. That's the other end of our thread and just go forward, grab a little bit of fabric and then put it through the bias and continue all the way around okay grab a little piece of fabric your needle the edge of the bias You want to make sure your tension is okay like while you're pulling this through so your threads don't get tangled up while you're doing that that's why this guy's okay so i hope you guys can see that okay and you're not gonna like really pull it like you, you don't have to pull it tight just enough to where it lays nicely Some folks um, may choose to do this by machine because it takes up like a little bit more time. Um, but I, yeah, I like to just go ahead and do this all the way around. All right, so. <laughs> see just go ahead and continue on your your whip stitch all the way around and then yeah that's gonna be your tea dress let's see if we can i'm gonna kind of put the needle in here and then hold it up for you guys so you can see what we created tonight with exception of finishing our neckline. Okay. Here 
All right, so this is pretty wide because my hips don't lie. And let's see if I can. Well, that's still not a good angle, but this is, this is our tea dress. And if I lay on, I can lay onto the board too, so you all can have a better, better view. All right, I think that's a little bit better for you guys to view. And there she is. See how these edge, these underarms are a little bit puckering. So you could go ahead and do that, that um, those triangle cuts in the inside, and that will lay a little bit flatter. And you'll have this nice and ironed and ready to go. And if you wanted to add like um, some more, you know, we, your, um, if you wanted to do ribbons across the bottom or across the sleeves, you can also do that. And we'll learn about that more on Friday. So those of you that are able to join us, um, I wanna welcome you to Thursday's class. We're gonna do ribbon, ribbon skirts. And so that's gonna be really fun. But yeah, thank you everyone.